Welcome to the Rockbrook Church Podcast. Our hope is that today's message brings you hope and clarity for your spiritual journey. We love hearing how God is working in your life. Feel free to share any stories of how this message gave you a new perspective and hope. Email us at church at rockbrook.org to tell your story. Well, hey, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the last week of teaching of this church-wide spiritual growth campaign we've called Aligning Your Life to God's Will. Doesn't it feel good to be at the end of this to accomplish something, check something off the list this year? Come on, don't you feel accomplished this morning? You should feel good. If you missed any part of this uh, this series, today's going to be very helpful, I believe. This is the last sermon of this series. It's the last week in which you'll have two sets of notes, uh, one in your worship guide, one of them is for your small group this week. And in that session, we're going to look at what does God want me to do with the rest of my life. It's a very similar outline uh, to this weekend's message, but with uh, kind of a different set of insights. I'll also lead you through communion in that video. Uh, So if you're a small group leader, you're welcome to provide bread and juice for your group. Or we have prepackaged elements in the back of the room today. If that helps you out, you can just uh, go ahead and grab uh, one for every person in your group. And then at the end of that small group video, uh, I can lead your group through communion if you like in your small group there. Uh, Now, since we're talking about communion, now it's just a great time to tell you that the Rockbrook for Kids team is making communion available for families uh, this afternoon at three o'clock in the East Building. It's a great way to give your children the opportunity to explore and experience communion with the support of your family. So we're looking forward to that as well. Next week is really the capstone or the other bookend to this series as we're not hosting worship services next week. We are celebrating Serve Day. We'll have a Saturday uh, 8 a.m. huddle. We'll have a Sunday 8 a.m. huddle and then spread out all over the community and share the love of Jesus through acts of service. This weekend, if you're not plugged into a Serve Day project yet, uh, you can take a look at our project list, sign up to serve, in a project that fits your abilities. We've got indoor, outdoor stuff. We've got strenuous stuff, not as strenuous stuff. All different kinds of projects, different physical intensities. Uh, check out the lobby, rockbrook.org serve, the app, plenty of places to uh, peruse those and sign up. Tom, Pastor Tom, who oversees our serve day, asked me to just let you know that uh, we're doing trash pickup uh, uh, as well. I'm leading a project on Saturday, a project on Sunday. He said, if you don't do anything else, take, take the one hour you would have that you'd been at church and just serve your community by, by picking up trash. Just take, just if, even look through the project, say, man, okay, I, I don't have a lot of time maybe that weekend, but you could at least take the hour you would have gone to church and use that to serve. And then we'll come back uh, next weekend, Easter weekend, and celebrate all that together. I just want to thank everybody who's leading a project, serving in a project, and so forth, making this happen, serve team that's made this happen. Uh, We still have a week to go, and we already have more people signed up to serve than served at last year's serve day. So thank you, and praise God for that, and awesome stuff happening. All right, look at your neighbor, say, you look so aligned. You look aligned, wow. My goodness, you look aligned. You know, living aligned to God's will is the only way to really live. Everything else is just existing. And we've been looking in this series at what aligns us to God's will because we don't want to just exist. We want to live. In fact, Ephesians 5, 17, would you read this out loud with me? Do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Ephesians 5, I would encourage you to read that whole chapter uh, today sometime. I read just this verse in about 10 different translations. One of them said, don't be stupid, know what the Lord wants you to do. And I didn't put that one in your outline, but it spoke to me, I'll tell you, I felt it. (laughs) Alignment to God's will and purpose for your life starts with Him. It doesn't start with you, okay? Alignment to God... Here's the way I'll say it. It has to be reverse engineered. You don't start with you and map out a trail from you. You start with where does the story end? Where is God leading me? Where is God? And then you back up 
from that and you say, how can I get in alignment to God? A man went hiking and camping with his friends. He got separated from his friends and it got dark. He was on the trail, sketchy part of the trail, falls off the trail, rolls down into this valley, gets up, is completely disoriented, it's dark. He pulls out his flashlight to try and find his way back to the trail or figure out where to go. He's shining it one way, shining it another way, cannot figure out where to go. And realizes the problem here is that this flashlight is attached to me and I am lost. (laughs) And that's how it goes for many of us is we have this little light and the world tells us start with yourself, follow your heart. That's the wrong advice. You don't make a good North Star for yourself. You need something to aim for. So the man turns out his flashlight, lets his lights adjust. He sees off in the distance an orange glow. He now knows what to move toward. He moves toward that and it's his friends who have built up the campfire as big as they can make it so he can find his way back to them. You need something bigger than yourself outside of yourself to align to and God wants you to have that. In fact, if you're taking notes, God wants you to be aligned to his will. He is shining lights, casting out signals, trying to get you on board with it. God wants you to know your purpose and alignment as clearly as possible. And listen now, as early as possible. Now, if you have little kids, you look at their life. It seems like my boy's life purpose is to go to urgent care as often as possible. Like that's their... In fact, I nicknamed them this week. I said, you guys are my safety inspectors. Like, next time you sell a house, don't hire an inspector. Just bring my boys over. If there's a faulty outlet, they'll find it. If there's a loose stair, if there's a bad railing, they'll exploit it. They'll find it instantly. It's like, play with the toys, maybe? Like, come on, guys. But what's the goal? It's to train them up in their purpose. Life is not just about getting to eternity. Life is preparation for eternity. And sometimes what can happen in Christian circles is we raise up people in the faith to say, I know Jesus, so I'm ready to die. But they don't know their purpose in Christ, so they're not ready to live. Again, in Ephesians 5, verse 8, it says, For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of the light. So what is the North Star that's guiding our church, and guiding our lives to uh, his will. You know, I hear people say, maybe you've heard this said, keep, let's keep the main thing the main thing. You ever heard that? Keep the main thing the main thing. I've never found anyone who would disagree with that. Everyone wants to keep the main thing the main thing. But none of us agree on what the main thing is. That's the problem. So we want to be a church that says, well, let's let Christ determine that. Let's let Christ determine what the main thing is and that he himself is the main thing. In fact, I'll say it this way, and this is just a summary statement of all that we've studied. It's our guiding light. It's our North Star. The North Star is how the ancients would guide themselves when they would cross the seas or oceans. And they knew where they were when they knew where the North Star was. And when you find that North Star and you know where it is, then you know where you are. It's what guided them. Here's our North Star as a church. It's that Jesus is Lord and a great commitment to his great commandment and great commission will grow a great church. It'll grow a great Christian as well. Would you read this out loud with me, please? Jesus is Lord and a great commitment to his great commandment and great commission will grow a great church. What does it mean that Jesus is Lord? We started there and we said God became a man. He came to earth. We saw this out of Philippians chapter two. And he died in our place to demonstrate his love for us, to pay for our sins. And now he is risen and exalted to the highest place in existence. And life really begins for someone when they say Jesus is Lord. That they're the ruler, they're sovereign. Jesus is sovereign, master, ruler. In 1 Corinthians 8, 5 through 6, look at this verse with me. There may be, there may be so-called gods in heaven and on earth, and some people actually worship many gods and many lords. But for us, there is one God, the Father, by whom all things were created and for whom we live. 
And there is one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things are created and through whom we live. He guides us to great living. We live through him and he guides us to, Jesus wants you to be aligned to the will of God. And there are two primary ways, two summary statements that he does this for us. It's through the great commandment and great commission. Some of us have just been learning these for the first time. It's been very exciting. Some of us have been revisiting these or drilling down on the depths of these in this series. But no matter where you are in the spectrum of your faith, in terms of your faith, we need to know Jesus and be reminded of these. They're what guide us as a Christian. You're not a good North Star for you. Jesus is a good North Star. So if you will with me, just one more more time in this series. One of the people with Jesus this day asking questions, an expert in religious law, tried to trap him with this question. Teacher, what is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And a second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. What guides us is this great commandment and the second that is equally important. Let's also look at what drives us. Why do we get up in the morning? What inspires you? And that's the Great Commission. This is where so many people are, where we can get broken in our understanding of faith. As we'll say, okay, I love God and I'll love others. And they stop there. And they think that the goal is just to become a good person. To help, to love God, to help the world. And it's great to be a good person. That is part of God's goal for you is to be a good person. But let me tell you, it's a lot easier to just be a good person than it is to obey Christ. It's a lot easier to say, well, I'll just sit back, I'll be steady, I won't rock the boat, and I'll be a good person and never step out in faith in Jesus' name. And there are a lot of good people who never obey Christ. And we can help each other and love others And we could help each other off addictive behaviors and become better parents and better spouses and manage money better and become better co-workers. And we will help each other with those things. But friend, uh, somewhat like, I can get off my addiction from drugs. I'm not addicted to drugs, but I'm just putting myself in this for you today, okay? (laughs) Of I could be, get off my addiction to drugs and still not know God. And clean up my life and live a very good life, but then spend eternity separated from God. And we can help people, that's a good thing. But sharing the gospel, that is a God thing. And that's what we need to do. So Jesus leaves his disciples with this. He came and told them, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So there is our North Star. What's amazing is that the five verbs, the five things I've highlighted in here, the five action items out of these two statements sum up the five greatest questions of life. Everyone is trying to answer basic questions. Who am I? Do I matter? What is my place in life? These kinds of questions. And to be aligned to God, you must answer these five questions. That's why I'm giving them to you twice in two different ways. In the small group and in this weekend service. Because to be aligned to God's will, you must answer these five questions that we've drilled down in each week of this series. The first question you must answer is what will be the center of my life? Who are you going to live for? What are you building your life around? What does your life revolve around? Everyone centers their life on something. But when life is breaking apart, when you're getting knocked out of alignment, you need an unshakable center. You need the right thing at the center. And this is the question if you're taking notes of worship. This is the question of worship. Because whatever is at the center of your life is your God. 
And when you commit your life to Christ, you're saying, you're my God. You're the center. And you keep, how do you keep God at the center of your life? You keep him there through worship. It's why we gather to worship regularly. Because have you noticed that everything in your life is trying to weasel its way to the center and become the center of your life? Have you noticed that everything in the world wants to be number one in your life? It wants all your time. It wants all your money. It wants all your devotion. And through worship, you keep Christ at the center. And when Christ is at the center, you worship. When Christ is not at the center, guess what we do? We worry. Worry is the warning light going off on the dashboard that says, Christ is, you've moved Christ out of the center of your life. And by, the Bible says that a sense of wholeness and peace comes over you, settles you down, displaces the worry. The next great question of life is what will be the community of my life? Who will be my tribe? Who are going to be my people? And we've studied this. That's the power and the great commission of when Jesus uh, tells us to be baptized. Because when someone's baptized, they're identifying with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection it's also a unifying experience where they're entered into the family of God, the body of Christ. And this answers the great question of life, of belonging. Where do I belong? Where do I fit in? Where will I live out a life centered on God? And you answer, which church family am I going to be a functioning member of and be devoted to? Listen, the more you center your life on Christ, and the more that you mature in Christ, the more you want to sacrifice for his church. Because Jesus loved the church and gave his life for it. And so you have to answer, how am I going to do that? Where am I going to do that? The next question to be aligned to God's will is what will be the character of my life? Thank you for writing these in. What kind of person will you be? And God's far more interested in who you are than what you do. It's how you define the standard. I don't know if you remember when you were a kid. Uh, it seems like everyone has this moment where they do something stupid and someone calls you out on it or your parents call you out on it. And what, do, what do you say? Most, kid, most kids only say this ever one time because it doesn't, really, it doesn't work. You find out it doesn't work. I remember I said it. Everyone else was doing it. Everyone's doing it. And what does the parent step in and say? Everyone else is not the standard. <laughs> Everyone else is doing it is the exact reason I don't want you to do it. How's that working for them? And you have to decide what is going to be the character standard for my life. Who am I going to become? This is the question, if you're taking notes, of growing. Who am I going to grow to be? And I would highly recommend that you build your character on Christ. When you decide, who do I want to become, that you answer, I want to become more like Christ. It takes time to do this. You can be saved and still be struggling because you're growing. And we're all growing to be someone, growing in certain ways. To be aligned to God's will, we're growing in Christ. Number four, what will be the contribution of my life? You have to answer this question. God put in us a desire to contribute. Listen now, every time you have a moment where uh, you look at something and you say, well, that's not right, and there's kind of like a, a righteous anger or a righteous a justice that rises up in you, and you go, that's not right. Uh, every time you want to give back, like you're filled with gratitude, and you want to show thanksgiving in, in, your, in your life and gratitude, where did that come from? Those things come from God. The morality the sense of right and wrong, the sense of thanksgiving that you have in your life, those come from God. And every time you have a desire to contribute in your life, that desire is God-given. And so you have to answer, what am I gonna, what's going to be the contribution of my life? Where am I going to contribute my time? Where am I going to contribute my talent? Where am I going to contribute my treasure? To whom will I be generous toward? Will I be generous toward God and to the body of Christ? And this is the question of life of service. What will I serve in my life? Everybody serves somebody. And God says, you can make a difference with your life. It's how you show the outpouring of gratitude to God for saving you, for creating you, for loving you. And lastly, number five, what will be the communication of my life? What will you be known for? 
everybody's known for, becomes known for something. You can think of the people in your life and be like, well, this is what's most important to them. This is what they're known for. This is what they think about, what they worry about. What will be your testimony to the world? And if you're a parent, part of your mission is to raise your children to know Christ and help, him un- or help them understand his purposes for their lives and to send them out to their mission in the world. This is the question, last note here today, of sharing. What will you share in your life? Of course, our lives must support and validate the message we communicate. This this is why the Bible says, be sure to live in such a way that brings honor to the good news, because the good news is going out, and before people care to know if God is credible, they want to know, is your testimony credible? Are you credible? Can God really make a difference in my life? Now here's the thing, let me just, before we leave this series, just stick with me here for a couple more moments. The question of what is God's will for my life it is the number one question. It's the most asked question in some form. As a pastor, it's the number one question I get is what is God's will for my life? But what I have found is the way that we have answered it in this series is not the answer that anyone is ever looking for when they ask that question. (laughs) Because the question they're asking when they ask is, what's God's will for my life, is uh, where am I supposed to live? What school am I supposed to go to? Who am I supposed to marry? What job am I supposed to have? What career am I supposed to invest in? And honestly, Those are secondary issues in your life. And there may be multiple possibilities that God would say, yeah, you could live there, live there, live there. Those would all be in the spectrum of my will. You could have this job, that job. Yeah, you could marry this person, that person. It's all, you could accomplish my will in that place. What matters most is that you fulfill God's eternal purposes regardless of where you live, where you work, whom you marry, what school you decide to go to. And you want to have, make those decisions in the realm of, will this help me accomplish the purposes of worshiping Christ, belonging to Christ, growing in Christ, serving in Christ, sharing Christ. And so here's what you do in your decision making. Is if if you got the big question of, of, let's go very simple. Should I buy this car? Is it God's will for me to buy this car? You lay out, well, my purpose is to worship Christ, belong to Christ, grow in Christ, serve Christ, share Christ. If I buy this car, that Pastor Tom communicates this so effectively. He puts this in front of people and says, okay, if you buy this car, well, can you afford the car or are you going to be in debt and now you can't give to Christ because you're giving to the car? Uh, Can you not, now you've had to take on more work because you got this and now you don't have time to connect with your church because you bought this car. And so can a car derail your purpose in Christ? Actually, yes, it can. Because now you've structured your life to where you got to live for the car. And so you look at this relationship, say, "If, if I go into this relationship with this person, am I going to be able to worship Christ more with this person? Belong to Christ better, grow in Christ more, serve Christ, share Christ because I'm in this marriage. That's why God says, I don't want you to be unequally yoked because you're gonna, it's going to pull you away from your purpose. You say, if, if I go to this school, will I be able to worship Christ there? Belong to Christ, grow in Christ, serve Christ, share Christ? Can I live a life centered on Christ there? Yes, okay, but how? And what decisions will I make to intentionally be able to do that in my life at that school, in this place, in this workplace? And so sometimes the answer is clear, no, I should not do that. It's taking me away from it. Yes, I should do that. I can grow my purpose. Some decisions are neutral and you just decide, okay, I can do this, but how will I intentionally fulfill my purpose in these things? One day, history will come to a close. And eternity will go on forever. Someday the book will end on all your problems and all your decisions. And the Bible says that many are the plans in a man's heart. But it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. And so you focus on God's purpose for your life. You run this race. And when fulfilling your purpose gets tough, don't give in to discouragement. 
Just remember this verse. Take this with you. Let's read it out loud together. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. I want to close with one more passage. Close out this series with this. This is from Revelation 4. It's talking about this scene where uh, there are these elders taking off their crowns, casting them at the feet of Jesus. What's amazing is in the throne room of God, there's always a song. (laughs) There's always worship, glory being given, lifted up. And this one little song, this one little chorus will be sung. It says, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created. And have their being. And may it be on earth in you as it is in heaven. That God has created you. By his will you have been created. And you can live and move and have your being in him. Would you pray with me please? Heavenly Father we thank you uh, for giving us a clarity. And you want us to have it as early as possible. So Lord I thank you for Uh, the spiritual growth campaign that has stretched across all our small groups and even all our age groups. That we can know your purpose for us and begin living out your purpose for us. Lord, help us to uh, raise a generation and to raise our families and to pour into one another in a way that helps us live aligned to your will. Lord, I pray for each person in this room uh, who has a decision, uh, is faced with decisions right now. And they're very much in those decisions. Should I uh, continue this relationship? Should I, we make a commitment? Should uh, I go to this school or that school or this job or make this change or live here or there? That you give them clarity, but also help them remember what's most important in life and what will last. Lord, I pray for anyone going through a trial today and uh, things are heavy. Lord, I pray that this, this word would be impressed onto them and that they would remember that these trials are light and momentary compared to the eternal glory that is coming. Lord, we praise you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. We would love for you to get connected to what's going on at Rockbrook Church. Visit us online at rockbrook.org for service times, small group information, and other ways you can discover your purpose here on earth.